Hello, everyone. And uh, development in Indonesia has uh, some different platforms. And I want to share with you how we operate the biggest retail process in the world. Next, I'm going to introduce from the first why we choose Vitex. Second, how we operate Vitex in JD.com. And next, my colleague Xu Jinke is going to introduce the plans we use and also our future plan. First, why we choose Vitex? First, what is Vitex? Vitex is is a database clustering system for horizontal scaling of MySQL. So what it's working on? It's working on dividing the database, but not just dividing the database. This is the structural map of Vitex. And we can see the application is the application nodes. It could be several nodes. And through the MySQL my, my protocols to connect to other nodes. And the application is going to send a query to the gateways. And the gateways are going to dispatch through the, um, the other DN, the DNS. And there are also the keynotes and using the ID as the and originally, the table are used in a different way, and now we can divide these keys utilizing the ID protocols and putting them into three database. And in this way, we are able to divide the database in different different parts and including the um, a circle and also the tablets we can take it in the shard and then in this database there are three shards and in the original key um, tablets we can put it into three nodes and we also achieving the division of the of the original database and also there is a topology services as well, including all those um, all the ta all the tables are going to divide it based on different um, different fields, and all of this will be recorded into topology. And also we have other tools for operation. There were VDCTL and also VTCTLD. It's providing the external functions originally. For example, I have originally some have some shots already. I want to add some extra shots. However, I want to change for the uh, other nodes. For example, I want to download or upload the nodes. Then in this way, I can use the VTCTL to uh, operate it. So this is the major structure of Vitex. It's mainly for the dividing of the database, but is beyond dividing of this database. And we have several concerns or um, it because we have several factors to consider when we when we choose the Vitex. There were several characteristics versus my circle. It has it's well proved in inside JD.com and also we have a lot of experience on operating my circle. So we that's why we choose these uh, database operations operation methods and it we will feel very confident in this um, bottom layer of it, fundamental layer of it. Because inside JD.com there are a lot of the the other using MySQL database. Even now we want to migrate it, we are using MySQL. And it just needs a little bit modification, so the cost of migration is very low. The Query means I have a lot of data in some database. It may be more than um, billions. But now I want to put this data on a big data platform to do some analysis or the downstream operations. Usually, if we have just a very small amount of data, we will just use this lab and then use some of the nodes on our 
gateways and then this will be shown on our big data platforms however when we have a lot of data for example it's more than billions then I will put all this data into the nodes gateways and this will cause the cause some problem within it if, if, if with this big amount of data I will just uh, read part of it to the gateways and put it on the platform and then later I'm going to uh, write it on on the uh, big data platform, it's um, not utilizing the streaming operations. And of course, the streaming operations means the whole train should be floating and there should not be any blockage at any of these nodes. So all of these nodes should, should be able to manage this kind of stream operations. And next is sharding and the two-phase commit and also the secondary index. And for the next three parts, I'm going to talk about it in details. Resharding is doing the um, data segregations. For example, originally we have two shards, but there were too many data, so I need to divide it into four shards. So we are able to um, use resharding to do that. And next is the two-phase commit. It can um, it can ensure its atomic commits and also to avoid any of the replications during the commits. This is also one of the highlights of the Wintex functions. First is resharding. And we have separated several steps for resharding. First, it's copying the data. We can take it as one shot. And within one shot, there are the master and also the uh, replicate. There are you can see the structure here. I want to take one of the replica from the from the connection. So this connection has been uh, disconnected. So there is no relation be between these two. So this is uh, a drain here. It's um, a snapshot data. Originally we have table and we use the ID to divide it. And I want to take a very simple rules on the shading uh, on the um, segregation. So I will to disassemble them based on the ID rules and also utilizing the stream query to uh, to check it and then put it into these shots. If with this ID, I will put it in this shot. With, without it, I will put it in the, the replica. So. In this way, we can deal with the uh, screenshot data. And during the copying process, the master data is always writing in. It means that there is some of the delay between the master and the, the replica. So I want to replace this replica because there is some delay of the data. It's going to um, synchronize some of the, the logs the bin logs and winters are able to synchron synchronize these um, bin logs and then to analyze it and convert it into a circle and all of this writing and updating will be synchronized to the, the shards that we have denied, designed it to and it will relate it to the operations of the whole clusters. So well, without this master and replicate relationship, the two the two parts should be synchronized. Otherwise it will have some problems. So what should we do? And then for the original node, the original shot should stop service. And we are going to use two another two new shots to work on it. And originally, it's rooting to these shots, and now it's rooting to the other two shots. It's just you need to use several seconds. So the resharding just affecting the whole clusters by just a few seconds. This is the um, the the sharding system. We have been working on this resharding process for many times already inside JD.com. And here is another an other VTS transactions. And we have two phase of commit. 
And I will first focusing on multi shot. And there is one question that it's de debated from the multi shot. It's two simple examples here. It's also the it's using the ID using the ID for the sharding. If it's less than five one two, if it's uh, less than five one two, I'm going to put it into shot zero, and for the for those that are not, I will put it into shot one, and also I will have a n another terminal, and I will provide a verification. So for those ID less than 5.2, I will put it in the shot 0. If it's 900, it means it's larger than 5.2, so I will put it in shot 1. If it's 400, I will put it, because it's less than 5.2, so I will put it into the shot 0. And at last, I'm going to do the commit operations. And the shot 1 has been succeeded in the commit. However, the shot 0 maybe have some failover and also have some weird or abnormality. And when the shot one doing some commit, and it means that it's um, it would be unsuccessful. It will cause some of the rollback. So we will see some of the uh, problems from the, it's because of the terminal, um, the client's terminal that makes this failure. And shot, shot one is successful, but shot zero is failure. So, however, in overall, it has caused the failure of the commit. But you still need to see the scenario of this. If you cannot accept partly commit, then there are two results you can adapt. First, a single shot. All of the data can only be included into one shot. You can put it in shot one or shot zero if this has um, have some failure, then it will tell the clients and also to report the error. And the second is two-phase commit. The second way to solve this problem is two-phase commit. It means all of these operations will first record it on the uh, on the logs on the cloud logs, and then before it's submitted, the machine has some problem, and we need to wait for the reboot or the recovery. Then it's it's going to get into the reboot phase and it's going to implement this result. And later we will find that uh, data has been committed. So the through the block I'm going to uh, report this error again. So this is the um, the framework to use by Cleantex. We also want to meet a scenario. First, it TPS is very high. This is an example. And also, the, we use the Cape and Cape AS. So, but there is some problem with it. The, K, the KAS think it has some problems. And uh, Kubernetes will reboot these nodes and always rebooting it. And because its TPS is very high, so that will cause the partly commit problems. But it will be solved by the two-phase commit. Of course, uh, Kubernetes we should um, deal with the bugs on the KPS. The KAS and the second of the Windex. So, what is the functions of this Windex? Um, on VTK, they will use the, the VT table as its routing. If ID for 1, 2, 10, put in shot 0, and for the other part, put in shot 1, and uh, for shot 2, and then we're going to make it for another part of the um, number, the name ID. So, ID is 1 and 5, and name is a like 5 and Lisa, and later I insert, and the ID is 11, and the name is Lisa. The, the two names are both Lisa, but it has been put in two shots. However, when I do the inquiry based on the ID, for, for example, then it's going to uh, to say the ID is 5, then it's going to root it to shot 0 because I use ID for sharding and then it's going to root me to the shard 0. Sometimes I cannot provide this ID. For example, I can only use name to do the query. Then if the name is Lisa, 
if the if we use the name to look for looting, then what should we do? On all of these four shots, we are going to acquire all these four shots again uh, once. Although it did not find it on shot two and shot three, and we still need to check it. So this uh, uh, enlarges the reading. So how did Vetus cope with it to avoid the enlargement upon insertion the IT equals 5? I also saved the correspondence relationship between Lisa and 5. So when Lisa is equals 1, then I can uh, check the result very quickly. So I'll search it on this table in this table first, where Lisa is one. So we have the ID five and ID eleven, and I only need to search further in shot zero or shot one. So I don't need to check all four shots, so as to avoid, you know, unnecessary uh, reading and, and access. If it's there are four shots or even you know two hundred shots, then it's a uh, very there will be very significant. Uh, latency observed. Second, I'd like to talk about how we run betas in JD. This is our internal architecture. So through MySQL protocols, it's connected with our VT gate. And the VT gate through GRPC to connect with uh, our shards. The video shards uh, encompasses uh, the VT shard and VT tablet, two components. And the feedback uh, queries will be, we feed back to the eventually to the uh, apps and VT gate through the watch My mechanism. We're using ETCD to enable uh, the uh, original data storage. And VT data have a watch mechanism which will real time watch the router information and other changes in uh, original data so that the data can be synchronized uh, with uh, our, uh, our shards to enable a more efficient synchronizing. And many uh, JD businesses have uh, internal memory requirements for um, based on our uh, MySQL operation for to TV business, for example. For some scenarios, we need to real-time synchronize the data on our big data platform by extracting the bin log to synchronize it with a big data platform. In JD, we have a bin log service. <coughs> we real-time synchronize the data through Bing Lake. And the Bing Lake will offer subscription uh, services for the users so as to enable real time synchronization of data. In JD, a few, there are four key systems. One of them is still under development which is a backup system, real-time backup is still under development. The third one is already being applied online on a massive scale, and I will focus on the three services. <coughs> First one is JTransfer. What does it mean? So many of our previous services, we use uh, MySQL directly, and now if uh, the Vetus is online, so we are you know, switching to Vetus to transfer some of our services. <coughs> so we real-time extract and synchronize uh, BTK uh, data, Bing Lake data. This is only uh, limited to this stage to enable real-time synchronizing. <coughs> and there is no master replica latency. It is similar to what I have uh, described. So this business module used to visit uh, MySQL module. Now it only needs to visit uh, uh, the, the new module. They only need to restart the services. It used to connect with uh, MySQL cluster, now switching to uh, Vitesse cluster. So this is uh, what we do for transfer. It's mainly used for the key accounts of big businesses in JD, where there used to be many nodes, many data 
So in this way, we don't have to consider the storage space. In the past, maybe there are 32 shards, and uh, we have to expand uh, the, the key space by ourselves. It's very difficult and time-consuming. Now we're using a uh, VTS key space. There are no problems for storage at all. So this is what we use internally. It's also part of uh, VTS component. It's called uh, uh, Orchestrator. It's open source to hub up. We call it uh, OLC. So on the left side is the OLC cluster, on the right side is the uh, Vitex cluster. The Orchestra cluster will regularly, like every 10 seconds, to retrieve the data from all uh, nodes, MySQL nodes. They are master replicas, data, um, their latency, and after the retrieving, this data will be uh, moved to the internal uh, storage. And after re written in, it will conduct analysis just to tell whether there's some problems between the master replica latency. If there's some problem with uh, the master replica system, then it will select uh, a system with the least with the uh, least latency to switch it. And also, if uh, this part, if this master replica is dead, then it will trigger a it will trigger a switching to another uh, master. No manual intervention is required in the process. Another component used internally is our mall. So for our business launching, there are two steps. The first step is the uh, request. So during request, the data warehouse resources will be allocated, for example, how much CPU, how much internal memory. So that's normally what we do. So after the request, the uh, project manager will approve on the request. And after the approval, based on JD's resources, there will be a DBA approval. And after that, there will be uh, an online database will be created. And the way we create uh, the table is similar, including the request uh, table, approval table, and DBA approval based on their own professional knowledge to evaluate whether the table's creation has some risk factors, whether it's compliant with uh, uh, regulations. And after that, the online table will be created. And after the creation, there will be some more interfaces in KBS, KBS to apply for resources, uh, scheduling, etc. So the process by creating the table is uh, not uh, too difficult. It's just a database uh, creation, but uh, the, uh, to change the structure of the table is not that easy for our R&D people. They have some knowledge about the database, but their understanding is somewhat different from ours. We know that uh, for some you know, business requests, there are no primary keys. Uh, this, is not what, not, this is what we are not recommending. Or maybe the primary key is not auto-included. We would recommend the auto-ink function. Or maybe there are some deprecated storage engine or deprecated characters. Or maybe he has uh, uh, created a table and created another one. But the table actually already exists, and there's some data in the table as well. So now they're using a, a dump a, a sequence to delete it. But this is a risky behavior. And there are some even lower uh, mistakes, like a syntax error. Mm -hmm. so these are common problems and unavoidable. Next. Some of uh, the users, they don't use Vitis. And based on Vitis, we can do some interesting things, just like I mentioned. By creating the table, there might be some issues, for example, uh, uh, syntax error. Vitex has one advantage in that uh, there's a very good uh, modular-based uh, system with very l low coupling uh, level. So we don't need to change uh, the uh, we don't need to change the, the modules, even if uh, there are some uh, syntax errors in some modules, but because of the low coupling level. For example, I can introduce uh, the tabula model, uh, modular to create a tabula. If there's some syntax uh, error, 
and I can tell the business department that uh, there's a syntax error in the SQL, so there's no need for you know PM and TBA approval to identify the error and eventually resubmitting the request. And some of the tables, uh, key, uh, primary keys, and other restraints. Like if there's no syntax error in a SQL after analysis, then I can acquire the, the name of the table, the list information, the primary key information. All this information can be acquired by then. Similarly, I can execute it online, a short table sequence. And then I'll look like whether there's a table online. If yes, then I'll tell R&D that your table already exists. No need to submit again or submit the, the SQL again. Or that if the table does not exist, then following this, following these rules, I can uh, examine it and verify these uh, uh, master replica information or whether these uh, SQLs are compliant. It's uh, very easy uh, to uh, deliver these functions. Next, I'd like to and, you know, for people interested in beta tests or potential users of beta tests, some advices. My first advice is uh, based on the example I mentioned, uh, we, the reusing of uh, beta test code. Even if we don't use beta test uh, services, we can still use beta test code for some of our in-house development. For example, the parcel module. Actually, in China, there are many teams are doing that using the parcel module of uh, Bytes. Besides, uh, while doing resharding, they will first extract the bin log and uh, uh, translate it into MySQL. So all these uh, related modules can be easily accessed and utilized. And also some of the existing MySQL modules, they're, they're, they're not coupling with the business logic of uh, Bytes. And second, let Vitesh run at the lowest R&D cost because it's based on Validities and it's a database and cloud uh, solution. One friend of mine, he, he's using Vitesh and he intends to run it in an official way, but some of the big teams have a QBS uh, experience and data center establishment teams experience, but some smaller teams, they have never used the QBS. So it take, let's take step by step. Big test can run QBS, but the first step should be, you know, on some of our existing Docker or physical servers to run a bit first. This is easy to do. And after that, we can provide uh, online production services. And the next step would be uh, further development, integrative development. Thirdly, especially for OM, the code may have uh, some bugs, and the operation maintenance may be mishandled. But don't let a problem affect uh, all your services. Especially if the service is big, like hundreds of uh, businesses are like, sharing the same uh, module. Then if one procedure is mishandled and it affects all the modules, it will be disastrous. Now, my fourth advice is to split large clusters into multiple small clusters. Now, JD is using the largest Vitesse cluster in the world. If you are taking, if you are walking in advance of, uh, uh, you're taking the lead, you will encounter problems that no one else has encountered. If you don't want to invest in R&D to solve the problems, you can split your large clusters into multiple smaller ones to avoid unexpected issues. Later on, my colleague uh, Mr. Jinka will share problems and solutions. Good morning. Just now Mr. Haifa has shared the second first and second part and the third and fourth part because of the time restraint, I'll quickly go through them. So I'll talk about uh, uh, what are some of the problem solutions uh, JD has encountered and adopted. And next, I will share our future plans. I'll start with uh, challenges encountered. 
JD is operating the fair to say the largest or the largest in China um, they test cluster probably uh, we are online we have over 20,000 EP tablet base and uh, around 3,000 EPS and we have the largest VTK cluster uh, around 400 so in operation in running we have encountered many problems so uh, first report is the various demands and some will say that we have a lot of things that is not supporting and after we find out these problems we are going to manage all of these demands and also the um, the inference between different apps because it's the, the shared clusters so they want to have some priorities in these clusters so during our operations we also expected that there will be some problem happen in our uh, in our topology services, for example, the metadata is too big. Sometimes it will have some OM. So when we commit to the uh, gateway, because we the VT gates, because we have a lot of uh, users, so how can we upgrade these VT gates, etc.? It's all challenges for us. First of all, I'm going to tell you how we solve these problems. It started from the very demand because it's based on the VTest 2.0 version and we also have some custom modification on JD and define some of the log and prepare protocols and also have support some of the more complex, complicated operations. And we found the box on the VTEX. There were some of the uh, leakage in it. We are, later we are going to provide the PR to the officially. And next is about the big value. We are going to and link the ETCD to Radix. And as for the upgrade of the VT gate, we are going to utilize its characteristics to do some of the um, unaware upgrades on the client side. Because we have provided different kind of accounts like RWRORS, so we we can uh, some of them can read directly from the um, the warehouse, so it can separate their readings. So that it will avoid some of the problems happen to the gateways, and also we will provide um, um, specific VT gates to some of the big amount, big demand nodes in the clusters. We also have very detailed monitoring. And we also want to do some more convenient operations on restarting and do um, the scheduling more intelligently and migrate from 2.0 to 3.0 because originally working on the uh, 2.0 and 3.0 are able to satisfy more demands. Just now we have talked about monitor everything, so we want to include mitigate VT table tablet in my circle, etc., so that we can provide better detailed and accurate demonstration, etc., to the users. And for the original UI and for the DBA. We need to simplify some of the operations. As for intelligence scheduling, it's very interesting for us because we're using some of the machine learning algorithms to include some of the resources needed by the users, including some CPU to to do some scalability work so that it can save some of the costs of our company. And later we're going to migrate from 2.0 to 3.0. 
So this is the work we need to do. Today, we are very honored to come to share with you together with my colleague. And during the utilization of Vitex in JD.com, we have got a lot of um, a lot of help from our team and also from our friends as well. And I also want to thank the Vitex team. Thank you for uh, all your support. Next, we're going to hear more speeches from the Winters team. And next is their time. And it, they are on SE16, on the, bo the booth SE16. And you can meet with us there to 